Welcome, Jenny. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, I've, I've had the, the good fortune of knowing you for a few years, but I actually haven't seen you in a while, so this is actually a fantastic opportunity to catch up. We'll uh, just pretend no one's here, <laughs> we can have our normal catch up. <laughs> we all have friends here, like everybody's welcome to join. Um, so, uh, we're going to talk specifically about this um, space that we cover at Hardwired, which is frontier tech, emerging technologies, and all the things. And actually, I was just looking up, you, you've um, actually invested in a bunch of companies that we featured here as speakers of Pillar uh, today, uh, but also Tempo. I didn't know, so that was, that was a nice surprise. <laughs> yes. Uh, also, Tempo Automation, Latch, the, the Locks, Lozent, Aware, Chargeify, Kinetic, so it's actually a... a a long uh, group of great companies, or a big group of, of great companies. Um, but let, let's start about. Uh, let's, let's talk about you. What, what's your um, What's your background? Um, how did you get into that whole world? What's your story? All right. Well, very eclectic background. Um, started as a lawyer, did a little stint in finance, but really consider myself a founder. So in 2006, I started a mobile voice over IP company. Um, and you know, at the time, really not much startup activity in New York. Um, not many women running, you know, tech companies, wasn't a technical founder, so a lot of challenges, as you can imagine. Um, and it was really, what's interesting about it, and kind of leads into this idea of frontier tech, is that it was always talked about as this mobile company, and mobile became this category. So people would go, oh yeah, I remember, you know that mobile woman uh, in New York? And everyone knew it was me, because there was like hardly any companies in New York, and hardly any... Um, so mobile was like this really interesting category, um, just like, you know, and I'll talk a little bit about how I see IoT as, as a category or a non-category, but I ran that company for about five years and we were acquired in 2010. It was the most traumatizing, most amazing, hardest, best thing I'd ever done in my life, and I was not ready to do it again. Um, and so flipped over to the other side, uh, where I ran a, um, a strategic fund for a number of years, and now I've been at Techstars almost five years. Um, and so at Techstars... The strategic fund was BBC, right? Yeah, so I ran a, a media-focused fund, and um, then got a call from David Cohen, who is the founder of Techstars, and he said, hey, what do you think about hardware and IoT? Um, and I was like, I'm sorry, I think you have the wrong number. <laughs> I'm a digital media person, I you know, d did a lot in mobile. And he said, yeah, yeah, well, the thing is that the companies that are coming in, like, they know how to build the technology, like, they need help with building businesses, and you've built and scaled businesses. So that was kind of how my first foray into, uh, into hardware and, and hard tech and IoT. Um, that was when? What year? So that was 2014. Um, yeah, and actually had the pleasure of meeting the Ember Labs folks as well. Um, and uh, I mean, what an incredible story! Like all these, you know, they started their Kickstarter in 2013, and you know, they're they're still in market. I mean, so many have not um, made that made that transition. So it, it's really inspiring. Um, so when I started, really was doing a lot of consumer, and so kind of was was interesting to be thrown into that kind of second wave of hardware excitement, I guess we could call it. Like people were calling it hardware 2.0 and everyone was raising money on Kickstarters and investors that had never invested in anything hard tech were like throwing money into it. I mean, you, you remember those days. I, th I remember you smirking like, oh, they're going to learn. <laughs> I think we all learned. Um, we got lucky with a few kind of cool companies that came out of that class. Um, Outlet, which was a baby monitor, that was that was a nice one. And um, actually a company from Boston uh, called Grove Labs, I think they were with the Ember folks, um, which was an appliance for, for growing um, vegetables. And um, yeah, so that was kind of my first, first foray was really on the consumer side. Um, and uh, so today you are back at Techstars or in a different Techstars program, which is the main uh, Techstars NYC program, which uh, has played, by the way, this enormous role in the uh, uh, tech ecosystem in, in New York. Um, I guess, you know, tell us about this. Well, we'll dive into IoT and all the things, but uh, Techstars is such an awesome thing to tell us about, uh, I guess, what it is and then when is the next class and all the things. Okay. Yeah. So Techstars, um, we're uh, we're really a network that helps entrepreneurs. People think of us as an accelerator, but we're we're really more of a network. At this point, we've invested in about fourteen hundred companies. Um, we were running forty six accelerators, which is pretty incredible. But New York was one of the first. So New York launched, um, in, I believe, in two thousand eleven. Uh, the most founders have gone through that program. And what's cool about it is it's actually any type of company can apply. So we call it a horizontal program. Um, 
Um, so, you know, we've had a real diversified uh, set of companies and um, our applications are actually open now. So if you know any um, awesome founders building, you know, tech enabled and tech companies, please, uh, please send them to me. The program will be this summer. And you need to be what just uh, founders as an idea. What what stage is appropriate? You just need to be awesome. <laughs> We really look at everything from you know from idea through um, you know through through people that have product and market and and revenue and and really just looking for founders that have that incredible spark. Um, many of the companies that have gone through my program, so this will be my eighth accelerator program that I'm running at TechStars. I'm at this point the most senior MD. I've run the most programs um, and, and have had companies where they really were ideas, but the founders were just so passionate. They really knew, like what I like to say, they, they knew where the bodies were buried and they were going to you know, build this company regardless of whether they got into my program or whether anyone funded them. Like They were going to do it, and I think that's what we're looking for. And since you've been doing this for a while across different programs, I cannot resist um, to ask you about your thoughts about how New York has evolved, right? This all started in 2011, now 2018, what have you seen change? I mean, I started here in 2006, right? So no WeWork, no co-working, you know, running my, running my startup from my, my sad apartment. Um, everyone telling me I would never raise a dime unless I moved out to California. I mean, it was just, it was, it was pretty grim. So it's so exciting for me to be uh, running Techstars New York right now and just like having gone through that whole cycle as a founder and now as an investor um, and really just a, a supporter of, of startups and the startup culture. So, um, you know, New York now is, you know, the second biggest tech ecosystem and it's incredible. There's events like this every single night and, um, and it's just getting better. Um, and then except, specifically, except not as good. Not except. definitely not as good, not as nice offices either. Um, but one thing that we're, we're really actually seeing and I feel like really lucky to have played like a teeny part of, of this is, um, you know, we're seeing really diversified companies. It used to say New York, you know, if you're doing e-commerce or you're doing a media company or, um, you know, then fintech kind of came in play, you know, but now we're seeing deep tech being built here and, and that's super exciting. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been awesome. Some of the companies that, that I've invested in, you know, take a, a company that went through my accelerator, Latch, they were, you know, three guys, two and a half guys. Um, they were from Washington, D.C., and they had this really big vision around security and a, and a connected lock. Um, you know, August was already out there. They were really going, uh, you know, August had raised about $100 million. And everyone's like, really, Jenny, a lock company? But when you met these guys, I mean, they, they were just incredible. They were incredible founders. They had incredible vision and charisma. You know, and now that company has about 150 people, and they're building it here in New York, right? And so it's very exciting to, to just be a small part of getting startups started here with that first check or that first help. And uh, now that you're doing the, the, the main or horizontal uh, tech stars program, are, are you still excited about uh, IoT? I mean, you know, between 2014 and 2018, there's a lot of up and downs that happen. What do you make of the category? Yeah, so I was kind of referring it referring to it before with mobile. And, you know, I think now no one says mobile is a category. Mobile is part of everything. So I, I'm feeling that way um, in terms of IoT. I feel like... There's, we've had the, the kind of ups and downs, but, but really the digital meeting the physical is, is really part of every company. And so I started thinking, you know, I've run four or five iterations of the IoT program at Techstars, and I started thinking, well, it, it really is part of everything. Maybe we don't actually need a program for it. Maybe we can help infuse IoT principles um, and technology into other types of companies. Um, and so that, that's kind of what I'm, what I'm feeling about it. Well, you still bullish on the space. I mean, obviously, you were referring to it a minute ago. I think what we've all collectively learned over the last few years is that, uh, you know, hardware is hard, as um, previous speakers have already mentioned. I mean, it, I mean, do you think we've, uh, we just at the beginning of this whole phase, do you think we've hit some headwinds? What, what are you? What, I'm so excited about it. Um, I think we're, we're only in the second inning. I mean, how many innings are there total? <laughs> 
Yeah. We're not in the first. Don't ask the French we're, we're, Okay, <laughs> good point. Nine. <laughs> okay, nine. Um, so I think, you know, we're out of the first and I kind of just described the, you know, the consumer and then after people were disillusioned with consumer, everyone was like, oh, industrial IoT and that became the new buzzword and then people, founders and investors realized, oh, the sales cycles and the legacy architecture are really hard. So, you know, I think there's been a little bit frustration and then I feel like the media really caught on to this like, oh, it was all hype. <laughs> Um, and I really don't believe any of that. I think that, you know, more and more, um, we're, we're getting more and more of it. Um, and I think that's that's really exciting. I just think it's, you know, it's changing. It used to be, you know, around VR and AR, and now people are talking about mixed media, right? And so it's changing quite rapidly, but I think that's what's really exciting. So I feel like we're in a in, in two, um, and we're going to see a lot of the kinks um, smoothed out, and I can't wait. And uh, do you, as an investor, do you have any preference at this stage for, so IoT specifically, Internet of Things, connected devices, a preference for uh, consumer versus enterprise? The pillar conversation or presentation was very really interesting from that perspective, right? Something that started in consumer and then the market pushed it towards uh, enterprise. I mean... Consum building consumer businesses, whether IRT or not, I think is hard, right? And so you need a special DNA to make that happen. And then, you know, coupled with the, the challenges of, of physical product and hardware um, and the costs associated. So um, I'm still excited about consumer, um, but I think I've been investing, quite frankly, more in, um, in B2B and enterprise and industrial um, because I think the impact is really massive. And like those are just the types of businesses I'm interested in. And then taking another category in that whole ecosystem that I know you've invested in as well, drones. Same question, where do you think we are in the cycle? Um, I'm not sure if I look at drones as a category or I look at the vertical, right? So we're investors in a company called Drone Seed, which is in the ag tech space, and it's such an exciting company, right? And they're using computer vision, LIDAR, um, sensors to help with reforestation, um, if that's a word, re, uh, they're, they're helping um, seed ecosystems in a, in a really um, healthy and safe and effective way using drone technology. So... Um, so I guess I'm more excited about these verticals that it can impact than drones in and of itself. Or a company that you met that went through my um, through the program that you mentored at um, Skyspecs, right? So um, they're looking at um, obstacle collision sensors, and you know they came with the program and and they didn't really have a customer, and they had to kind of figure out who their customer is. Turns out um, they've gotten a lot of traction in the wind turbine space, and so now they have quite a few customers. Um, you know, around the world um, in that space. So I think like energy, I, I think of these as verticals and, and drones as kind of the enabler. Does that, does that make sense? Would you say the same thing about AR and VR as well or is it more horizontal? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure yet on that. I'm still, I'm still a little stuck. Um, I, I don't really know where to, where to fall on that. I think... Um, and personally, do you like AR and VR, this, this debate uh, that's happening these days where a lot of people say, well, AR is the sort of the gateway and uh, the other people say it's going to be the main market and then some people like to be contrarian and say, well, once you put a VR headset on, you'll realize it's the, you know, ultimate market. I mean, any, any preference, even, even personally as a consumer? I mean, don't you feel like so much of, I mean, when you're a hard tech investor, like you're, you're investing in not just business model risk, but like technology risk, right? And so that's one of the things you, you need to deal with. Um, and it's just like the technology has not been, been consumable. It hasn't been, there's been so much friction. So I guess what I'd say is it was kind of the same with like consumer versus industrial IoT. It was like people weren't having a good experience with their smart home. So they were like, oh, you know, consumer kind of sucks, right? And so I feel like it was a little bit the same with VR, right? Like the headsets were clunky. People were getting nauseous. It was, it was, there was so much friction that then they're like, oh, well, it's not about that. It's AR. So I think it's going to be, a, you know, I think it's just going to be called, I think there's a new lab out in Brooklyn called called the R lab, right? It's just the reality lab. So I'm not sure, like, <laughs> I'm not sure which technology is going to win, but I think it's going to be a, a, a mix. Very 
Very good. Um, well, what are some of the lessons you learned working with you know that broad um, set of companies over a few years now, specifically for IoT? Um, I think when the founders come and pitch me on like a timeline and how much money they need, and I always say, okay, now triple that. And they're like, well, what are you talking about? And I'm like, well, triple it, you know? And I bet if we asked you guys at Ember um, back in the day, you know, how long would it take to get to market, um, you would have said like 18 months and, you know, four years later, right? And it's just, it's just how it is. Um, so... Being realistic, I think, is, is the big, um, is a big realization and really making sure that you can capitalize the company for a lot longer than, than you think you need to. Um, and so what we've seen as an investor is founders raising before a series A, I mean, sometimes they're raising four rounds of capital, um, where that used to be kind of like one round. Um, just to, um, you know, just to be able to raise a series A because the, you know, the barriers are, are so much higher. And did you find that the follow-on investors, the Series A, Series B investors, were receptive to that space, or was that always a little bit of a of an acquired taste? Um, you know, I remember meeting you, and and you, you were someone that really invested in hard tech pretty early, um, and you know, having a conversation with you about like all the money that was flowing in in the early days, and and how a lot of those investors just weren't going to have the the appetite or the wherewithal because you know you had more experience in it. So, um, so I think it's a very particular type of investor, and I think as a founder, you have to be um, really smart about that and and do your research. I mean, at the end of the day, sometimes you need to take money, you know, from people that don't necessarily um, have a ton of experience in that business. But if you can, if you can get people like Matt to invest in your company or people that really understand, you're just going to have a better, a better, um, like, it, the experience is just going to be better because they're going to understand timelines. They're going to understand um, the processes you need to go to, how much money you need to raise, as opposed to, you know, the last thing you need is an investor who's, like, completely alarmed by, you know, a six-month delay in China, right? It's like, <laughs> you need people that really understand it. Um, so Great. That, was, that would be my and Who were some of the best teams that you invested in or that you saw evolve? I mean, be, beyond the, you know, the usual founder quality around, you know, grit and determination and, and all the things. Was there a specific makeup where you had a hardware person, a software person? What, what, what did you see work? So the hardware teams, um, the hard tech teams I found have been a little bit larger. Um, and so that's, you know, uh, um, we've had a few really good teams where the, there were four founders, um, and that is a little less typical, I believe, in, um, in software companies. And so obviously covering more bases, um, you know, having someone who really understands, um, you know, how to how to bridge the digital and the physical, right? When you can have, you know, a firmware person that's a, that's a founder, someone like really understands that. I mean, that's, that's just really incredible. And the teams that haven't worked is where they've tried to outsource some, some of this, which I think is really core. So, um, the teams have tend to be, um, larger. Um, most of them have had some type of corporate experience, like they've worked at a company um, where they've had some, you know, mentors and they've had people that they've worked for. Um, I've also noticed, noticed that when it comes to hard tech, just having those, um, those big company experiences have been quite helpful. I mean, we see a lot of founders that come right out of school. I mean, the pillar guys are, are a great example, so it's not across the board. But, um, but I do notice the ones that have, um, that have worked at a big company and have had, have seen some of these challenges at scale, um, when they've gone on to start their own companies. That's been very helpful. Interesting. And, uh, well, what are you excited about these days, um, you know, whether IoT or, or beyond for the new Techstars class? Well, in, in hard tech, I, I'm on this ag tech kick right now. <laughs> so, ag tech. Ag, ag, ag tech, ag. yes, agriculture. Um, so we talked about drone seed. Um, I just recently met up with the, with the guys at, um, at Bowery. Um, right, so they're, they're doing some really interesting thing around indoor hydroponic farming. Um, so I think that, you know, this is an, a massive issue for, you know, for the world around, you know, feeding the world in effective ways. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited about how we're going to see um, the impact on agriculture. So that's, that's a place that I'm spending some time. 
Interesting. All right. Uh, we're going to open up to questions. One here. Hi. Um, so one question. Well, you had mentioned a couple different cycles of, um, you know, sort of the hard tech or just the IoT general um, sort of funding zeitgeist uh, going from consumer. There was that whole like look alike, work like sort of thing. Um, and now, like, I just wanted to ask you, like, what do you think um, a Series A right now looks like for a consumer hardware startup? Um, because I think the goalpost has shifted a lot. So I'm just curious, what do you think that milestone is? I think it's hard to make generalizations. I mean, I've had um, I've had companies that have really sold sold a you know a big vision um, on a prototype and raised a nice Series A. I think that when you have product in market, you have a lot more to prove. Um, and I also then just think it depends on you know are you pitching hardware or software investors, right? If you're if you're pitching a real data play. Um, those metrics are going to be quite different than people that really understand hardware and if you're really staking on hardware. So I hate to give, um, you know, Matt maybe could give you some some better answers on that, but I've, I've really seen it across the board. And so what I like to say to founders is like, you know, don't, don't you know, pigeonhole yourself. Like, you know how much money you, you need, you know what your vision and your dream is, and you need to find investors that, that really buy into that. For me to say like, oh, you need to have this much MRR if, if you're a service or, or whatnot. I think it's hard. You know, in other areas like that I invest in, like SaaS or whatnot, I can give you the metrics. I think I think hard tech really um, doesn't, like from my portfolio, when I think of Latch or Tempo Automation or some of these that have raised from real hard tech investors, they've really kind of bucked the trend and they've really sold an incredible dream. I guess I have a question about ag tech and what intrigues me. I used to work on farms, so I know how bad they are in terms of the chemicals they use, the pesticides, and the loss rates that they get, and this is a real problem. So at what point can we use data processing to substitute for a lot of those pesticides we use? My fantasy world is we use drones to zap insects with lasers and things like that, and we essentially make all farming organic because we can use data processing that's the end point that I want to get to. How do you see that coming? I mean, are you familiar with this company, Drone Seed? They're doing some pretty interesting things around this. They are not just seeding um, to, to populate with trees, but they're doing a lot around insect, you know, natural insecticides and, and whatnot, but doing it from the purview of you know safety with the drone, because apparently you need low-flying planes usually, and that's really dangerous. So I believe it's all starting to happen. I'm not an ag tech person. It's just an area that I've started to get interested in and have done a little investing in. But, um, but I, think, I think there's a lot there. Uh, as someone who has a lot of conversations and meets a lot of IoT companies that are bootstrapping it, um, I'm curious to know what kind of priorities or considerations these, these kind of startups are giving for security and privacy. And especially from your perspective and Techstars' perspective, like, where do you value that when, when evaluating these companies too? That's a great question. Um, there's so much hype around IoT security, and I honestly think, unfortunately, like consumers, they actually don't care that much. And so, because they don't care so much, like startups are not spending a ton of time on it. Like there was that woman in San Francisco who like tricked out her whole house um, with you know every device, and um, you know when she was evaluating like all of the. Um, all of the um, the vulnerabilities, like it was apparently shocking. It was like almost in every device. But the, she said the thing that really pissed her off was that the smart home experience was so crappy, right? And so that's a, the, I mean, this this was like a consumer uh, perspective, right? So at the end of the day, people really want the experience, and I think startups play to that. Um, is it something that we look for? Um, we definitely want people to be talking about it. You know, we want some. You know, we want them to be thinking about it. I think at the early stages, the reality is when you're three people starting a company, you, you know, you've got so much to to tackle. Is that going to be top of the top of the heap? I'm I'm not sure. What do you think? Hi, I work for Tembu, which is an industrial IoT software company. And we're trying to think about when's traction going to really take off. And so I'm wondering, from you having looked at so many different IoT companies, when did you start to see a really rapid adoption rate? Was it that they really focused on a certain vertical, or they 
some, something else that really um, increased adoption quickly? I think focus. Um, I think that's. I think that's right. Like if you look at the um, the Sky Specs team, they were trying to be, you know, obstacle um, uh, obstacle avoidance, everything to everyone across industrial. And I think they realized that that just wasn't going to work when they honed in on this um, wind energy, um, and that like it resonated. They found product market fit. They were able to raise a Series A, and now you know they have. 50 people on their team, and um, they're really going deep on that, and they've opened offices around the world, but I really think it was, you know, based on the vertical, so that's that's pretty much what I've seen. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'd say that's it. So, um, you know, when I think of accelerators for hardware or, um, or incubator, I guess, I don't know the difference, sorry. Um, I think of, like, Bolt and, like, Lemnos Labs and stuff. Um, I, I tend to associate Techstars with like enterprise and consumer uh, software. Um, can you tell me a little bit about like how you differentiate Techstars for IoT? Um, I think that's right. I think if you really need help building hardware, going to a hardware program um, is is a great idea. We really focus on the business fundamentals, um, and so we focused on helping you build a business based on surrounding you with mentors that um, had built businesses. Um, so we're definitely more business process oriented. Although you know we obviously have people that could um, that could help you on the hardware side, and we have like in house people. But I wouldn't say that's the focus. Um, and a lot of our companies have kind of gone through multiple programs at this point um, on hardware hardware and software. Hey, how you doing? Uh, my name's Dan. I've, I've been in the uh, hardware space, startup space for about five years, worked at a company, got acquired. And one thing I've kind of noticed being in the space is that I go to a lot of these events and I constantly see there's a lot of engineers, there's a lot of, especially, you know, not just in software, but even in the hardware space, which is a lot less people mostly engineers, but I ask myself, you know, how do a lot of these startups navigate the sales and business development side? Like, how do they handle that? Because from what I've seen, a lot of them, like, don't really have any knowledge base on that. And I see, like, especially in hardware, a lot of startups just, like, getting wiped out in the first three years. Probably. Like, they'll get something built. They might even have, like, a real solid problem they could solve, but they're, like, it may be a combination of the messaging and like also like understanding like how to get it into the market. How do you see these start like from the ones that you've seen succeed? Like what have you seen sets them apart from all those other ones when it comes to establishing like sales and business development? From, from, from you know, I think going back to what Techstars focuses on is that we really, you know, focus on helping founders think about building scalable businesses. And so oftentimes those can be technical founders that have to use, you know, that kind of part of their of their acumen to um, to build those businesses. Maybe, you know, their inclinations are one thing, but when you surround them with people that can kind of advise them in some ways. Um, I mean, if you look at the founder of Latch, he's a non, he's a CEO, he's a non-technical founder. So, um, you know, that's one example of, you know, how it was done. This is a question. Uh, so how much have you seen traction in food tech? So food and food and IOT, uh, put together like, uh, an ex kitchen aid, uh, with, uh, with IOT. Have you seen any traction and in terms of funding, are you keen on funding for that or? It's something left to the biggies. Um, it's a good question. So we invest in this company, Grove, um, and that made a um, a device for growing. F it's really an appliance uh, for growing food in inside. Um, and they kind of, I think, they rode that first wave of um, of consumer excitement, and they were able to raise from lots of the big investors up front out in California and some some big names. Um, I think now it's it's a little bit harder. I haven't seen as many of those companies get funded. I think you know building appliances is 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 a hard sell. So I think if you're um, if you're really focused on hardware, consumer hardware, we've seen that become a little bit out of favor. Whether that's food tech or or other things, these people are laughing over there. So <laughs> I mean they're nodding. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I, so I, th I think it's tough. Um, but the one experience that I do have, this was a number of years ago. So this was 2014 or 15 when Grove raised their round and, um, and they were able to do it, you know, selling a big vision of what the future kitchen was going to look like. 
Um, Techstars now is running a program in Germany in partnership with um, with Bosch, I believe, um, around um, the Connected Kitchen. So um, they just started that program, I believe. So I think that would be one to follow to kind of see how those companies how those companies do. Time for about one more. What are you seeing in terms of uh, competition? Is it getting tougher now that everything is becoming global, uh, specifically in um, in like hardware? Like, do you see more competition, or do you, where, where do you see this? What going? What do you mean competi competition for? I mean, like, I guess when you started, like, th like say there was not a lot of companies. Um, what I'm seeing now is that you know, on every area, you, ha you immediately have a lot of startups, uh, whether it's local. Or, you know, once again, we're seeing more and more things coming from Asia. Just want to see your perspective. I mean, the first uh, hardware program I ran, there was um, six or seven um, connected thermometers that applied, companies. There was probably six or seven baby mowers. So I think it's been crowded for a while. Um, I think, you know, but there's a lot of kind of uh, the Me Too folks who are just, you know, they think it's cool to be in hardware. And um, I think... They, they learn the hard way. So I'm not sure if there's more competition in terms of China. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Um, sorry. Great. All right. On this note, it's a wrap. Thank you so much. Really enjoyed it. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me.